Last episode, we created the Las Vegas Venom, an NBA expansion team, and through the first two months of the season, we were sitting at 17 and 17, while unfortunately our expansion counterpart and the Seattle Supersonics were off to a 26 and 7 start. One of our biggest flaws to start the season was our rebounding, as we were ranked dead last in the league. So this episode, we were going to take a look at some of the prospects in the upcoming draft that we'll have our eye on to hopefully help change that. Before that though, we have our first ever matchup against our fellow expansion team, the Seattle Supersonics. This game was not off to a good start for us as we'd get called for an offensive three second lane violation, and the new face of the Seattle Supersonics, Bradley Beal would go right to work for them and get the first bucket of the night. We were still looking for our first bucket of the night, and it would come from Jalen Smith on a pick and roll, as that is what seemed to be working for our offense here early on in the first quarter. This game had gone back and forth to start tonight, and we would finally take our first lead, and then we would look to extend it as Markel Fultz would come up off a screen and not down this three-pointer. Seattle was doing their best job to keep it close though throughout the first quarter tonight as momentum was starting to pick up back their way for them. With just under a minute to go, Seattle would take the lead back before the end of the first quarter and it started becoming a battle again as we were trading leads back and forth with them. Seattle would have a chance to go up by two with a wide open three but that wouldn't fall. They would get the offensive rebound though and put it back up and in and that is one of the biggest problems our team is facing that we want to fix this offseason as Torian Prince would knock down that three and we'd head into the second quarter with a two-point lead. We knew it was going to be tough to keep this lead against the Seattle Supersonics throughout the second quarter tonight and it wouldn't take long for them to tie it back up as Bradley Beal would find CJ McCollum wide open in the left corner. It was now tied up at 20 apiece and Grant would pull up from mid-range to give Seattle the lead back and Seattle's offense was starting to heat up now as Bradley Beal would pull up. That would be no good but Steven Adams would put it back up and in as Seattle had now pulled ahead of us by four points and we were looking to try to get back in this one. And while we were coming up with some good defensive stops against them, we just couldn't seem to get any defensive rebounds. That had been one of the main reasons throughout the second quarter tonight that we just hadn't been able to stop the Supersonics. And after finally getting a bucket, they would call a timeout to try to take away our momentum. As they were up by six, but Torian Prince would come up and hit a big three-pointer for us. And we were hoping we could keep it at only a three-point deficit headed into halftime. As unfortunately, Zach Levine would hit that shot, but Torian Prince would answer right back for us. As Seattle would try to get one last shot off here before the buzzer and it was no good and we would head into the locker room only down by three at halftime to Seattle. As good as a team Seattle was, we had done a good job of hanging with them throughout the first half, but hanging around wasn't going to be good enough for us if we wanted to win this game tonight against them. We managed to hold the Supersonics offense from extending their lead much past five points over us in the third because when it looked like things might be getting away from us, we'd hit some shots to keep us in it. Despite all those shots we were sinking, we still weren't stopping them on offense though, so we really hadn't made much progress in chipping away their lead throughout the third quarter tonight. It was nearing the end of the third quarter now, and we found ourselves in our biggest deficit yet of nine points, but that shot from Trey Lyles would get it back down to only seven for us, and this contested shot from Zach Levine would be off the mark to end the third quarter. That would not slow him down though, as he would come off a screen and knock down a three-pointer to start the fourth against us, and for the first time tonight in this game, we found ourselves down by double digits to the Supersonics. We needed more than pick and roll layups in the paint if we wanted any hope of trying to cut down this lead as Dante Exum would give us that big shot and a dunk on the very next possession. After stringing together some defensive stops and making a few buckets, it looked like we still had a comeback in us tonight, but that would quickly change as Bradley Beal would find his way to the basket and put Seattle back up by double digits. It wasn't looking great for us as we were down by nine with less than 30 seconds and despite this last ditch effort by Luke Kennard on a deep two, the comeback effort just wouldn't be enough as we would lose our expansion matchup to this tough Supersonics team on the road tonight. And what really killed us was giving up 10 offensive rebounds to them tonight compared to R2. We would put that loss behind us though and would bounce back with a win over the Knicks the following night. And we would put together a great month of January with only three more losses after that game against Seattle where we would suddenly find ourselves sitting at the fifth seed in the Western Conference despite still being the worst rebounding team in the entire league so far. We were looking to fix that though in the upcoming NBA draft. The Draft Express might Mock draft had us picking Rudy Levins. He was a seven foot center out of USC who could stretch the floor with his shooting, which would fit perfectly into the style of play we have now with our big men. NBA.com mock draft had us selecting Brian Outlaw. He was a 6'8 small forward from Duquesne who could play the four position and was built much more to be an inside scorer and defender. Let me know down below what prospect you think would be best for us as we will keep looking at more of them throughout the season. Our next matchup was against the Phoenix Suns on the road. And in the past offseason, these guys had assembled what many 
thought to be one of the best rosters in the Western Conference, but their slow 23-26 start to the season was definitely not what anyone was expecting from them. Hopefully that meant we had a chance to pick up another win against this underperforming team tonight, but it was off to a sloppy start for us with turnovers. Devin Booker would help the Suns jump out to an early 4-0 lead over us to begin the night, and they would keep extending that lead as our offense had not even scored yet in this game. Our first bucket of the night would finally fall for us on a pick and roll play with Jalen Smith in the paint, which was followed up by our first three-pointer of the night from Isaiah Joe in the right corner. We were slowly crawling back into this game in the first quarter as our offense was finally warming up from the field, but we still had not been able to get our first lead of the night over Phoenix yet as our rebounding problems continued to plague us. Despite not having a lead over them, we were still able to keep it tied up throughout most of the first quarter, and we would finally be rewarded with our first lead of the night as we would get this bucket to fall right before the end of the first, but of course that would not last long as Phoenix would get one last bucket before the buzzer to tie it right back up with us. That quick play seemed to have shifted momentum back in the way of the Suns to start the second quarter tonight because we were right back where we started, struggling to try and keep this game tied up with them. We were allowing too many easy, uncontested shots like this for Phoenix and they were knocking them down against us, but we were staying resilient on offense still despite our defensive struggles as it was still only a one point deficit. Nearing the end of the first half, we would have a chance to take the lead as Dante Exum would be fouled on this fast break opportunity, but he would end up missing his first free throw at the line and would end up tying the score up for us instead as he made the second. Failing to capitalize on that opportunity meant that we were still playing from behind against the Suns as they would take a two point lead and Kevin Durant would then extend it to four points for them. Thankfully, Luke Kennard would come up clutch and cut it down to just a one point lead for Phoenix with this three, but that would leave too much time left on the clock for them as once again, poor rebounding by us would lead to easy second chance points for the Suns on offense and we would end the first half tonight down by three to Phoenix. We needed to put a lot more defensive pressure on the Suns in the second half tonight, but already were giving up too easy of buckets to them, as it was looking like things could get out of hand here pretty quickly to start the third quarter. Finally, our first bucket would come from Jalen Smith, as he would find inside position against his matchup in the paint, and he would continue putting in the work for us on offense, as he would be responsible for our first few buckets of the second half. Only down by eight, we were doing our best to cut into this deficit and keep it under double digits, but that was not going to happen if we kept leaving Phoenix wide open threes this half just like we did all throughout the first half as well. Thankfully we were able to respond with our own three as Dario Saric would find Luke Kennard in the corner who would knock this down which would only put us down by four but now looked like we were trying to throw this game away with stupid turnovers like this that would result in easy points for Phoenix. A combination of that and poor rebounding throughout the game like this was allowing the Suns to build their lead back up over us in the fourth but Isaiah Joe said enough was enough though and would knock down an open three to cut the lead back down to only five, and that seemed to heat him up as he would knock down another one to get us within two. Defensively though, we were not holding up and could not get a stop against the Suns offense here in the final few minutes of the game, so despite our big shots on offense that got us back in this one, we had to intentionally foul and hope they would miss their free throws. But of course, Devin Booker would knock down every single free throw at the line in the last 30 seconds tonight, as we would end up dropping this one to the Phoenix Suns on the road, 67-60 to in what was a close game, but once again, it seemed that rebounding played a factor in us not being able to close out the game tonight. A week and a half later, we would find ourselves at the All-Star break in season number one, as we were still sitting in the fifth seat of the Western Conference at 31 and 25. Halfway through season one, and Jalen Smith was our points per game and rebound leader for the team, and Markel Fultz was our team leader in assists per game with five. Hopefully these two can help our team maintain that fifth seed as we will fight to make the playoffs here in season number one over the next two episodes.